You're listening to the KSO Show. As always, I'm Derek Young. A solo show this week as we lead up to the big bout on Saturday between the Kansas State Wildcats and the Oklahoma Sooners. As many know, the, the, the Wildcats have been big, victorious in this one for two straight seasons um, on the heels of a 48, I believe 48-41 win over Oklahoma in 2019, which happened in Manhattan like uh, this weekend's contest will where it will be. And last year, in, in, a, in a season ravaged by COVID and on the heels of a, of a loss to Arkansas State, they were able to upset the Sooners 38-35, to 35, uh, that being in Norman. We're back in Manhattan for this mountain, and this is an episode of the KSO Show where we really lock down and, and kind of gear up for, for specific matchups in a contest that we, that we think will prove to be critical and kind of tip the scales one way or the other. And just as we're on the heels of a pretty disappointing loss by, by Kansas State, once again in Stillwater against Oklahoma State, it was by a score of 31-20. to 20. They really were not able to produce any semblance of a passing game. And look, Oklahoma's not. They're not idiots. They're going to make Kansas State pass to win. That's what they will do. Um, obviously, that'll be much easier if Skylar Thompson is under center. As we sit here on Wednesday evening, I'm still not 100% certain whether he will be or not. I lean towards him perhaps being able to go, and hopefully we'll have more answers as we are as we get later in the week, perhaps even as early or as late, I should say, as Saturday morning. But as of now, I still think that the passing game is going to be uber important in this matchup against Oklahoma. They saw what Oklahoma State did. They'll try to duplicate that formula, at least from a defensive standpoint and really make Kansas State throw the ball to win. And will they be able to do that? Uh, it'll certainly be easier if Skylar Thompson's the quarterback. I really have my doubts if it's Will Howard and or Jaron Lewis under center. Nothing against those guys, but this offense looks remarkably different when Thompson is at the helm. Whether you think he's a special player, good player, great player, um, really that's not up for debate right now. It's up for debate like who is the quarterback when Kansas State plays their best football, and without a doubt that is Skylar Thompson. Hopefully he'll be at quarterback for Kansas State this weekend. Whether he is or not, that doesn't change the fact for me that the passing game is going to be the most important phase. They need to loosen up the opposing defense so that they can do all the things that they want to do as an offense because defenses aren't going to allow them to do what they want to do until they can prove that they can throw the football. And right now that's just not happening. And it's not just the quarterbacks that are at fault. Um, some of it's path protection breakdowns. And I'll be honest, it's really hard to judge the offensive line and really blame them for this because what the, the, they're really the sacrificial lambs and all this because they get teed off on with eight or nine man boxes. And it's really hard to do your job when you're going five on nine, six on nine, five on eight, six on eight. It's just a numbers disadvantage. And that's because teams don't have to honor the passing game. They can just come in coverage even even cover zero in a lot of cases and not have to worry about the Wildcats or what the Wildcats are going to do as an offense. So um, pretty unfair situation and position at the offensive line is. We don't blame them as much. It'd be great if Daniel Matter Bebe was back. We don't know if that's going to be the case either. Chris Kleiman didn't seem too optimistic on that front um, when we spoke to him on Tuesday, but obviously he can help the passing game because they need guys that can make, to make plays. Um, you're going to get one. Look, you're going to get a lot of a lot of opportunities, actually, if you're a wide receiver or a tight end in this offense. You really are, because you're going to get an opportunity with man coverage, a single coverage a lot of times. You, all you got to do is make a play on the ball. Guess what? They couldn't do that. Um, Keenan Garber had a shot or two in still water, couldn't come down with the ball, maybe a late throw on at least one of those. Malik Knowles is really, I mean, if you're an all Big 12 talent, and I, I, mean, I thought going into this season that he was, you come down with some of those balls downfield that he did not come down with in Stillwater. And let's say he comes down with two of those downfield where he just got to get his head around and high point the football and bring it down and win your, win your personal battle against the other guy. It's a one-on-one situation. He wins two of those. One of them's probably a touchdown. The other one at least sets you up in pretty good field goal range, and maybe you can turn that score and possession into a touchdown. Either way, if Oklahoma State gives up two big plays in the passing game like that because Malik Knowles wins his battle, a battle that I think he's good enough to win, that's at least 10 more points for the Wildcats, and Oklahoma State has to reassess how they're defending Kansas State in that situation. Then you loosen up the defense a little bit, and you're able to run the football a little bit better. You're able to get your best football player to spawn in space a lot more. And just, you know, the course of the game changes because of that. Then you're probably looking at a shutout because Oklahoma State doesn't go into a shell on that side of the ball either and really puts Kansas State's 
defense on their heels. And that game looks remarkably different if you just get two or three plays that were probably there for the taking and the Wildcat receivers and tight ends and running backs and, you know, just the skill positions in general weren't able to do. So that, that's a big point of contention for me on the other side of the ball. It's simple. We did see the Kansas State defense slip up remarkably, like immeasurably a lot immensely for the first time this season in the first half against Oklahoma State. Um, before they could catch the breath, they were down 31 to 10. Obviously, seven of those points came from the offense's turnover inside their own 10 yard line, which they were there backed up because of a special team. So they played complimentary football. The, the defense, the defense is screwing up the off the special teams is screwing up and the offense is screwing up. That's not the complimentary football kind of complimentary football that you shoot for, though, unfortunately. So, yes, when it comes to the defense, how do they flip the script? How do they get back to doing what they were doing? Well, look, if you give a quarterback, quarterback six, seven seconds to throw with regularity, uh, it doesn't matter how good your secondary is, that they're going to probably going to get picked apart. We saw that. Yes, the secondary wasn't good. They were especially poor at tackling. That was pretty disappointing to see um, some, some of those efforts and some of those performances on the tackling side of things, specifically from Echo Boy Doe and Rust East, I thought. But at the end of the day, from a coverage standpoint, they weren't great, but they were probably put in a pretty disadvantage. uh, they were at quite a disadvantage because there was no pressure on the quarterback. Spencer Sanders is known for turnovers as well. Guess what? He didn't, he did. He had a pretty good day. Uh, He didn't struggle. He had his best game of his year or uh, was it the best game of his career. It's probably up up for debate. It's probably among, among those best games of his, of his career in Stillwater at Oklahoma state. So the the defense, the defensive line's got to get pressure. That's there's, there's no way around it. They started to in the second half and it changes the football game. Uh, they were able to, you know, stymie Carson Strong because they made life uncomfortable for him. They didn't make life uncomfortable for Spencer Sanders, and they paid a steep price for it um, as Oklahoma State's offense really got out to a fast start. And, and then that's another thing that can't happen, especially if Skylar Thompson is in the ballgame. If Skylar Thompson's not playing, uh, this offense is not equipped to play from that far behind. Uh, Oklahoma State was one with a fast start, and that was all she wrote for Kansas State. So that that's always going to be important, but especially so if Skylar Thompson isn't under center. And then we could talk about, well, what, what happens next year without Skylar Thompson. And that's, that's something that we're going to have to address at some point. Now's not that time. But those are the matchups that I'm really looking at this week um, for the ballot in Manhattan in Bill Snyder Family Stadium between Kansas State and Oklahoma. Can Kansas State be the first team since Texas in 1997, 1998, and 1999? Thanks for to Kellis Robinette from – the Wichita Eagle and Kansas City Star for, for finding that information. The first team since that Texas team in 97, 98, and 99 to defeat the Oklahoma Sooners in three straight seasons. And it hasn't been done in this century. Kansas State has the opportunity to do so in Manhattan this weekend. I'm Derek Young. You've been listening to the KSO Show. And as always, tell your friends.